It's often stated that the internet is nothing more than a series of wires, most of which are filled with pornography. Wires, it turns out, are being constantly nibbled upon by giant sharks. Okay, so when I first saw this article, I was like, what the fuck, this can't be real. <laughs> Well, there's no hyperbole at play here. The internet is indeed being constantly attacked by sharks. Well, first, it's important to clarify that the internet really is, for all intents and purposes, just a series of wires which span basically the entire globe and allow near instantaneous communication between people across the planet. And it's really weird, isn't it? It's like, have you ever seen like what a fibre optic cable looks like? Is it like, like a really thick cable? There's a really thick cable, but then on the inside, the fibre optic cable, that is the width of the human hair, and that's the internet. Presumably there'll be a picture of that behind me to demonstrate what we're talking about. And you look at that and go, how can so much information be transmitted by this? And it's, I don't understand it. I don't want to understand it because it sounds, it's probably way more boring than I think it's going to be. But like the idea that these, these, these cables, just that's the internet right there. And without that, the world will be fucked. It's like we'd especially be fucked because like we could not have made these videos for the last year if it was not for the internet and uh, you know remote recording. I mean, you could go and record, but we just couldn't edit. Yeah, <laughs> we couldn't, well, well, you'd well, have to record on your own. Yeah, <laughs> just I'd, talk I'd, to yourself. I'd have to record on my own, and then I wouldn't be able to transfer the footage because we um, transfer and upload hundreds of gigabytes of data every single day um, on days where we're recording and uploading. It's like just one of these videos takes up like 30, 40 gig. And hopefully now as we discussed it, like a fact bar below with like, you know, a bit of quick math in it, of like, you guys do what, roughly two videos per week each? Roughly, yeah. I and mean, the videos range in size from 20 to 30 to 40 gigs. So let's average that like 30 gig per video. And like, so two of them per week, every week. And let's say what, like 50 weeks of the year, because we take roughly like two weeks off a year in total. So that's like how much data has been transferred just for uploading the raw footage. And that's not to mention like, you know, afterwards. And the video is like, what? What's the final video total size? Um, just over a gig. Oh, okay. So they get shrunk all the way down, which is probably going to be baffling to a lot of people. Like, wait, what? He goes, yeah, because raw footage is, uh, um, yeah, it takes a lot of space and like, we've got to pay to store that. We have to pay to like, you know, upload it and transfer it. And without the internet, we would not be able to do any of those things. And as you might imagine, because of how important the internet is, it's like critical to a lot of infrastructure worldwide. Uh, companies are very keen to protect the internet, and that's why, despite uh, the internet or like, a fiber optic cable being like you know the width of the human hair, they're protected by this much bollocks on top. Because if that goes down, you have to replace it. And these cables are kept at the bottom of the ocean as well, so yeah. they won't be cheap to drag up. No, it, it costs a fortune just to do like um, routine repairs on these cables because they literally just span the entire breadth of an ocean in some cases. And uh, companies have to repair these cables a lot more than they care to admit due to sharks. Oh, it just seems so bizarre that sharks are an issue in this case. <laughs> yeah, you think when you're like, the internet, like what's the primary threat to the internet? Is it like that Ajit Pai, that knobhead who was trying to like go in? No, it's sharks. <laughs> It's sharks, because sharks apparently constantly attack the internet. And in fact, they attack a lot of undersea wires for reasons scientists aren't quite sure about. And that's what makes this so funny, because it happens a lot, but no one knows why. It happens so much, in fact, that companies like Google have to wrap their undersea internet cables in, and I quote, uh, Kevlar-like material. So the same stuff they use to make bulletproof vests, basically, oh, wow. to protect the cable inside from being attacked by sharks. But no one's sure why the sharks do it. They just attack the internet. I imagine they just see it as like maybe some food well, that's, on the floor or something. Yeah, that's one of the theories. One of the theories is, is that sharks mistake the cables for food. Because I guess like, you know, a wriggly like dark cable on the bottom of the ocean floor could be mistaken for like, you know, an eel or something like that, or like, you know, a wriggly fish. But at the same time, another theory is that the electrical signals given off by cables, you know, and like, you know, information and electricity passing through them, um, sharks are misinterpreting those signals as prey. But my favourite theory is that sharks are just dicks, uh, by which I mean sharks are known to explore their environment with their mouths, and anything they stumble across that they're not quite sure what it is, they will bite it. And that's why almost every single shark attack results in the shark biting once and swimming away. Because sharks will investigate a new object by biting it once to see what it is, and the theory is that they're doing this to cables because they don't know what they are. Because obviously it's an alien object in their environment, they want to know what it is, they'll walk up, take a nibble, realize it's not something they can eat and swim away. But we're talking about sharks here, so that tiny little just curiosity nibble is quite substantial. 
And he's noted that every single time companies do routine repairs on these undersea cables and they drag them up, they look like they've been gnawed on more than a dog's balls. <laughs> <laughs> just, they're just full of like shark bites. And he's like, God damn it, stop attacking the internet. There is footage of just sharks biting these cables. And it's really funny because the sharks go, <laughs> and that's it. And it's like, God damn it, shark. So that's my Netflix right there. That could, they could be interrupting my episode of RuPaul's Drag Race by doing that, the bastards. It's just a weird thing, like all these issues you get with the internet, you know, viruses, yeah. hackers, all this stuff. You don't think sharks. No that one never expects, comes to mind. No one ever expects their internet could to cut out <laughs> because a shark attacks it. Like, think, if you're like sat in like rural America and your internet cuts out, that could be because a shark attacked it. Yeah, ne next time. That's ridiculous. Next time I lose connection, I'm going to think that now. Next time I'm trying to upload footage to the Google Drive and it doesn't go as quickly as I'm expecting it to, I'm going to think a shark's there. A shark got it. Every time I lose you on Discord where I can't hear you anymore, that's a shark's fault. A shark fault. did it. <laughs> a shark did it, yeah. And the question a lot of people out there are probably wondering is, well, what kinds of sharks attack the internet? What sharks treat the internet as their prey? And um, whilst it's not that all manner of sharks attack these cables, including like, you know, the usual suspects, such as great whites and tiger sharks, which we've mentioned on the channel before, are known as the garbage cans of the sea because they will eat fucking anything. My favorite example of which being a tiger shark, which was found with an entire suit of armor in its stomach. <laughs> yeah, they'll just eat anything. It's noted that the biggest shark-based threat to the internet um, is a smaller shark, no larger than a cat, known as, get this, the cookie cutter shark. Oh, <laughs> How adorable That's does that so sound? Cute. And it's called the cookie cutter shark because it takes tiny, perfect bites out of things that look like they were made with a cookie cutter. Or, in my opinion, a melon baller. But I don't think the melon baller shark sounds as scary than the cookie cutter shark, which is, in of itself doesn't sound that scary. But this shark, like other sharks, investigates things with its mouth, but it has one of the strongest bites relative to its size of any shark. And the bites that it takes are fucking vicious. And they have attacked people. They've attacked boats. They will attack other fish. They will attack whales. Jesus. Like they have found whales with cookie cutter shark bites out of them. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's one of those things where even though a great white shark is bigger, um, a bite from a cookie cutter shark is more dangerous to a wire cable because a great white will bite it and it'll get you know, one tooth indentation here and there. The cookie cutter shark will take that perfect little indent out of it. The proof is in the telltale injury the cookie cutter leaves on its victim. A hole in the skin about the size and shape of a cookie. I'm now imagining like different types of cookie cutter shark. Like it'll be like you've got these standard rounds cookie cutter and then you've got a love heart shape and then a star <laughs> shape. The one's the one got like the gingerbread man shape yeah, mouth. gingerbread man. <laughs> yeah. And it's arguable that like, the cookie cutter shark might be one of the most badass fish on the planet because there are confirmed reports of cookie cutter sharks taking out nuclear submarines. Holy shit. Uh, this is not hyperbole because uh, they will attack virtually anything and exposed wires, I know has been like particularly um, uh, just enticing to cookie cutter sharks. And nuclear submarines in the 1970s had exposed wires on the outside that they didn't really think about. It's like, well, it's a, gi a giant submarine is going to scare away any marine life. Nuclear submarines were going back to bases with like, you know, just their machines going haywire and like just everything falling apart and like oil leaking inside of it because of damage to the outside. It's like, oh, what happened? Well, there's, there's bite marks. On, on like hydraulic cables and things like that. It was a cookie cutter shark. We now need to put like protection. So they need to, they started having to put protective stuff on the nuclear submarines god. to protect them from the sharks. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, another reason not to go in the ocean, eh? <laughs>